You're watching Marsha, Marsha, Marsha on ViroBuzzTV.com. Hello, I'm Jeff Vogel for a special edition of Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Marsha will be here in just a little while. But first, we're getting a great chance to introduce our viewers to some of the activities going on in St. Lucie County. And Teresa Aronson is the president and CEO of the St. Lucie County Chamber of Commerce. It is great to see you today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, we are neighbors. And there's, there's a great deal that goes on that, that, uh, that relates to both St. Lucie County and Indian River County. What are some of those things that are happening? Well, I mean, we refer to ourselves as the treasure yeah. coast so we're all involved but we we like to share events i mean you get more participation it's nice to see different parts of the area so i think we all work well as a group um we work with the indian river chamber mm -hmm. of commerce with penny chandler and her staff quite a bit yeah. but we do common events we have fishing tournaments that everybody participates in and uh just lots of great uh historical um reenactments and some historical celebrations uh, related to the Treasure Coast this year we're all doing together. A lot of tourism related yeah. items. I think that's that's a huge part of the um, economy in Indian River County and becoming more and more so is, is tourism. Is that is that also very strong in St. Lucie County? We are not as strong as we would like to be. Um, we have a few. Well, you have, air, you have room for growth. We have room for growth, for sure, <laughs> and we're open to growth. So if anybody out there is willing, come on down. Yeah. Uh, but we are planning, uh, hoping to get a, a hotel resort on mm -hmm. the island in the next few years. You know, we're working on the, the zoning and getting all that through. That will help a great deal. We are one of the best fishing spots in all of the country. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, we just need to build on uh, places to stay and some other attractions and and we're working towards that I think we're getting stronger every day now people people are moving to st. Lucie County from the north and the south you're getting we, it from yes. both ends aren't you yes we are we are one of the fastest growing uh, cities in uh, well Port st. Lucie is one of the fastest mm -hmm. growing cities yep. in all of the United States and we are about the ninth largest city Port st. Lucie in Florida but what we have is a great deal of homes a great deal of commuters and we are working very hard every day with our EDC to make sure that those commuters stop commuting and work here in, in St. Lucie County. You've seen amazing growth, in, especially in the South St. Lucie County over the past few years, haven't you? Yes, we have. We have, uh, the infrastructure is good in that part of the county, which is great, but we have seen amazing growth. Of course, we were hit hard during the recession, yes. as everybody was, and our, our major industry, I think, was building, <laughs> uh, which is a bad industry to be in during a recession. However, we're seeing that come back so quickly our median home values are rising every month and and un an almost scary rate yeah. again, um, and uh, inventory is low, so we are really bouncing back quite quickly. There's a huge temptation to to spend that money when it's coming in, but the smart thing to do is kind of put some in reserve. Yes. Yes, and I do think that as a, a nation, we've gotten a little bit better at that. Although these things are cyclical, so uh, yeah. <laughs> the people that have just lived through this recession and were hit hard have gotten better at it. But then, of course, you have a whole new generation that doesn't understand recession sure. and it starts all over again yeah and and Florida was particularly hit I mean uh, uh, people moving from uh, from northern states don't necessarily appreciate how hard st. Lucie County and all of the Treasure Coast was was hurt by the recession yeah very hard I mean when we we build a lot both count you know we have a lot of residential builds and so during a recession few people are moving especially when they're underwater yeah. on their houses so L let's talk about the diversity of the economy in st. Lucie County when we come back from this real quick break, we'll be back in one minute. Since 1951, Globe Life and Accident Insurance Company has been providing families with life insurance protection. One dollar covers the first month of coverage, whether you choose from $5,000 up to $100,000 of coverage. First day coverage means no waiting periods. Easy to buy, no medical exam, no risk 30 day money back guarantee. Up to $150,000 of accidental death coverage can be added to your policy. Globe Life makes buying life insurance easy. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Hi, I'm Penny Chandler. I'm, I'm Freddie Woolfolk. I am Barbara Hoffman. And I'm Gregory Simpson. I'm here with Police Chief David Curry. You're in good company on VeroBuzzTV.com, Vero Beach's local TV station on the internet. I just love it. Tell a friend. We love you
Marissa Aronson is the president and CEO of the St. Lucie County Chamber of Commerce, our neighbor here to, um, to Vero Beach and Indian River County. You've got a lot going for you in St. Lucie County. I think um, so. We do. Uh, we're, we're close to the beach. We're, you know, halfway, as you are, between Miami and Orlando. And mm -hmm. uh, we have a diverse industry. It's getting more and more diverse every day. Manufacturing is bouncing back in the entire United States, uh, which we are really aggressively right. going after some manufacturers to, to come live in, and play with us in St. Lucie County. A good deal of the growth uh, in St. Lucie County has been west. Yes, very true, very true. Um, well, I, you know, a couple of things there. Uh, the east is fairly built up mm -hmm. because yep. every city starts closest sure. to the water yep. and they move out. Um, but access to I-95 is a great reason for the western part of the county to be expanding. It absolutely is. We have two exits that you can go a straight shot less than three miles from 95 to the turnpike, which is incredibly rare in Florida. Right. As you know, they dissect and they, and they start spreading out again. And we have uh, two intersections where literally three miles down the road and you're on the other one. Right. That's huge for industry, huge for shipping, importing, exporting. Uh, so we hope to capitalize on that. New VA hospital in the in the works? In St. Lucie West, we were fortunate enough, we campaigned hard. Yeah. Uh, we had a, a very um, knowledgeable grant writer at the county that was able to get us through that process and we had a lot of support. But what they liked about our county was uh, the city and the county and everybody worked well together uh -huh. to make sure that this happened and so they did choose us and we're very fortunate to have that right next to a new uh, Martin Health System wow. hospital out there in uh, tradition actually. Is where so really going. really providing um, great medical care that um, uh, for, for decades people have had to veterans in particular have had to travel down to West Palm to get, right? Yes, they did. It, it, it's, uh, they do studies, you know, yeah. the federal government yes. doesn't do anything <laughs> without a study, but uh, they do studies, and this was an area that was in great need of that facility um, because it's so far for, for the VA to go anywhere else, so um, we're very excited about that, but that's going to be an assisted living uh, mm -hmm. facility, right. and uh, West Coast, very far south, the nearest one. So we're excited. We're very excited. Uh, over a hundred thousand in the in the immediate area veterans that will be yeah. able to hopefully use that facility one day. I, I, w I was going to mention that. I mean, there is a huge veterans population on the Treasure Coast, isn't huge, there? Huge, huge. Yes, there is. Uh, well, when you have one of the largest cities in Florida, you're going to have a lot of children. I joked for a long time our major export <laughs> was children uh, because we were considered a bedroom community, but we are definitely definitely bouncing back from that. Yeah. But yes, we have a lot of veterans. So proud to have them on the on the Treasure Coast. Yeah. Um, a lot of activities going on in Fort Pierce also. The down, the downtown is is in revitalization. Revitalization. We just got a brand new marina, which is state of the art. We've put some barrier islands in. We've expanded our slips and we are uh, really uh, going to be competing for those uh, major trips for people and, and fishing and uh, yeah. just a vacation spot could be the marina yeah. and with downtown and all its beauty and historic uh, beauty at that it's a great place to stop over and about. Let's, let's talk about those those little islands that you've added to the lagoon when we come right back. Watch Chamber Buzz at 6 and 10 p.m. Mondays and Wednesdays on HeroBuzzTV.com. Now that health reform is law, you cannot be denied health insurance coverage, but you can pay too much. As a single mom, I was convinced that we could not afford health insurance until I spoke to the people from ICANN, who told me that I qualified for a special enrollment and a subsidized rate. Now I get so much more for so much less. Call now and get the ICANN mobile app free. So don't wait another minute. Call ICANN, get covered, save money. Island building. It's its a new activity for the St. <laughs> Lucie County area and um, up around Fort Pierce in particular. And uh, Teresa Aronson is the um, CEO, president of the St. Lucie County Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. What's going on there in the lagoon? Well, that was uh, the, the 
Marina is run by the city of Fort mm -hmm. Pierce. Uh, Dean Kubitschek is the marina manager, and this was a passion project, to say the least of his. But we were hit hard during the hurricanes. I mean, it pretty much wiped their marina yeah. out. And if you've seen pictures, and I'm sure many oh, of you boats have. Boats on top of boats. Boats on top of boats. <laughs> it was like a parking lot in the parking yes. lot, but only for boats. So uh, we have, uh, he worked with engineers from all around the world. This is kind of a pilot project. Uh, it's a one of a kind, but they've built these barrier islands to protect that marina. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, cultivated in so much more, the wildlife that is uh, is populated there and the things that are going on underneath. He takes great pictures. He has a wonderful slideshow, and I Fantastic. encourage people to see if they can't get him to come out and show it to you. But it should help us with hurricanes in the future yep. because, you know, we were pretty much decimated the, the, there. The, the islands that have been added uh, are really for storm control, right? The, absolutely, storm control. You can't walk on them. They're not right. for uh, population. Uh, you can snorkel a bit out there. You can't touch them, walk on them, but uh, yes, storm storm surge is really what took the, the uh, slips out. The you know, dogs. I, I have not been paying attention recently, but um, did you? I, I assume by now you've gotten all the debris out of the inlet from the um, sunken barge. That uh, we did. Uh, that it yeah. took quite a it long did. time. Yeah. If you were following that in any way, it was a very elongated period, and there were days where okay, it's 26 feet, then it's 12 feet that we're getting through. So a lot of our charter boats and our our um, commercial fishermen had to go all the way down the river, go out the St. Lucie inlet which is oddly enough in Martin County. But they did finally get set, uh, the correct ship in after the second yeah. try to get that barge removed from our inlet. So. And I only mention that because that inlet is a vital waterway to the, to the economy in St. Lucie County. It yes? is vital. We worked with the uh, Department of Economic Opportunity to see if we could get some relief for our commercial fishermen. You know, we yeah. have a commercial fishery right there yeah. at our port. And uh, so we worked with them and they were of great help and, and it is a very vital, plus fishing and you can't, we have a large, a, a lot of large boats. They were letting anything 12 foot depth or more yeah. go out most of the time. Um, but yes, it was quite the ordeal. What's in the future for St. Lucie County? What's on, what, are, what paperwork, what plans are on your desk right now? My plan, well, I'm not in charge of uh, the plans, thank yeah. goodness. But I think that there's a lot in the works. We've, like I mentioned, that hotel condo uh, combination yep. on North Hutchinson Island. Uh, we've got the VA hospital. We have Tradition Medical in St. Lucie, or in Tradition, that's going to expand already. And of course, we always have the Mets, which brings down uh, tertiary oh, yeah, we, businesses. We, recreation is yeah. everywhere. But we're building tourism every day, and yeah. we've uh, found a little bit of a sports tourism niche that we're working and I think we're doing a great job but we're bringing back manufacturers and more importantly we're expanding the manufacturers that we have and we're really working with them to uh, make St. Lucie County a better place to live. So. Um, well it's already a great place to live. Um, Teresa Aronson is the president and CEO of the St. Lucie County uh, Chamber of Commerce. Please come back and give us an update soon. Absolutely will you please? I'd love to. Thank All you right. for having me. Thank you. Right. We'll be back in a moment and I think Marshall Littlejohn will be here. This important message is for any American who is about to turn 65 years of age or older. Nation's Helpline has Medicare supplement insurance news that may benefit you, your family, or someone you know. Most Americans who are about to turn 65 years old know they need Medicare supplement insurance, even if they already have Medicare. The Nation's Helpline Medicare supplement team can guide you and help answer your Medicare questions. Call today. Please call 800-632-2804. See Arts in Depth with Barbara Hoffman, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 and 10 p.m. The Furniture Man is a locally owned business that has served the needs of the community of Vera Beach and Indian River County for over 30 years. Here at The Furniture Man, we offer fine pieces to furnish each and every room of your home. Specializing in Floridian style, come browse our selection of bedroom, dining room, patio, and living room. Come explore over 10,000 square feet of showroom where you can find mattresses, recliners, sofas, dining, and more. Visit us at 673 US 1 in Vero Beach, Monday through Saturday, for all of your furniture needs.
Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Buzz TV. Now, this is Vero Buzz TV, and, of course, you can watch it all over the world. And right now, once again, every week we come on with the Pet of the Week, and that is from our Indian River County Humane Society. And it's just so wonderful, <laughs> Janet Winnikoff, because you, as a really director of the education, you're telling us everything about everything every week when you come in, but oh, now. I didn't think anything could pass Murphy from last <laughs> week. Did he get adopted? I believe so, oh, yes. That precious, precious <laughs> Bipple. What was Very it? Very cute. A yeah, a, pi a pibble. A pibble. Yes. A pibble. Much nicer than a pit bull, but yes. a pibble. But he adorable. was adorable. And, and any dog. And now we have? Well, um, we have an eight-year-old female kitten. Eight-year-old? I don't uh, think Eight-year-old, so. I'm sorry. Eight-month-old. <laughs> eight-month-old. Eight uh, what did I say? Eight-week-old. What He's is wrong? Eight-week-old. Yes. Um, it must be Thursday. So, <laughs> yeah, we have an eight-week-old kitten, and she does not have a name yet. So the reason that she doesn't have a name is because we thought it would be nice if you would name her. Oh. So maybe when we come back, you will have chosen a lovely name for this eight-week-old uh, female kitten. She is really adorable. I promise you, it will not be Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. <laughs> we already had something in here by the name of We Jeff. actually did have an animal named Marsha who was That's here right. while you That's were right. away. Yeah. Well, I can tell you, this precious little kitty cat, of course, I would just call it kitty cat. I think she is, oh, look at her. She's so beautiful. Now, tell me, though, because I know she's been chipped. Yes. Um, all of the animals at the Humane Society get a microchip, and I've actually uh -huh. brought a photograph of a microchip for you so that everyone can see. You can see, because it's this is a penny, in right. case you don't know, mm. but that's the microchip. That's the microchip. So it's, it's about, not even as big as a penny. Right. It's about actually the size of a large grain of rice. And what happens is it's injected underneath the skin right here between the shoulder blades, mm. and it is a permanent form of identification for sure. pets. So. It is really, really oh, fantastic um, uh, because uh, it is so important to have that ID for your pets, both she the microchip and the pet ID tag. And we offer free pet ID tags to anyone who contacts us. Oh. So even if you are not an Indian River County resident and you need a free pet ID tag, we would much rather be able to provide you with that ID tag for your pet than have your animal sitting in a shelter someplace. So oh, they're, absolutely. they're really great to have together. Now, Janet, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know what our timing is, but I, I want to come back and really talk about the fact that this is the prime time to go to our Humane Society and get a kitty cat. Yes. Yes, we are waiving those adoption fees yes. for both cats and kittens, so we want to find them all good homes. Oh, absolutely. Well, this one is absolutely adorable. Do we know what kind it is? I mean, she it looks mm. calico kind of, but not... Mm, I wouldn't say call? calico, but more maybe a tabby, just tabby. a domestic short hair. Domestic you know, short hair. Kind so of covers cats, everything, yeah. I was going to say, that was kind of like Murphy and Noah and all of that, yeah. <laughs> the other kitty cats. But, oh, she is so beautiful. And this is the time, as we said, not only have they waived the adoption fee, but also this is the age to get a new kitty cat in your, and even if you have another pet. Mm -hmm. Because wouldn't uh, this precious go? I'm sure she would do great with other cats or um, pets who would be in the household. So and I've just named her Tabitha. Tabitha. Oh, what a great name. Simply because she's a tabby. Yeah, that would All be right. a wonderful name for her. So. Oh, so wonderful. We're going to come back, though, in just a moment and let you hear more about Tabitha. And we'll call her Tabby, if you wish. Oh, but oh, she is so adorable. I think Holly Smith should take her home. <laughs> she is so beautiful. We'll be back in just a moment. You're watching Vero Buzz TV. I'm Marsha Littlejohn with Janet Winnikoff from our Humane Society. Stay with us. Creations and creates outstanding graphic design. Call Patty at 770-1521 or stop by Patty's Printing and Graphics at 2345 14th Avenue. Stop by for all of your printing needs at Patty's Printing and Graphics across from the old railroad station in downtown Vero Beach. Freddie Wilfrick and Gregory Simpson invite you to Spotlight Indian River weeknights at 6.30 and 10.30. And we are back once again with Tabitha and, of course, Janet Winnikoff of our Humane Society. We love doing this because, Janet, when you, each week when you come in, you bring some precious, precious little animal. Do we have an excess, uh, maybe an overload of kitty cats now? Yeah, you know, um, there's no shortage of cats, not just at our shelter, but across the United States. 
you know, if you think I'm about it, fix this because I think Tabitha has been has been playing yes, with my microphone. If you um, if you um, stop to think about how cats reproduce, uh -huh. um, if you have two cats and you let those kittens uh, have kittens and those kittens have kittens. Hypothetically, in seven years, you can have up to 420,000 oh, wow. cats, which is why it's so important not just to adopt, but to make sure that your animals are spayed and neutered. And at the Humane Society, we spay and neuter all of the cats who are at the shelter. So we do it not only to be responsible, but because it is also the state law. Oh, ho. Yeah. all right. Well, that, so, that makes sense. Because I know, as we were mentioning when we took the break, I even have this beautiful calico kitty cat that actually it's a it's an older cat mm -hmm. that roams in the neighborhood and she's so thin. And so I put a little food out for her, as does my neighbor mm -hmm. do that too. But she couldn't keep it down. So, right. you know, and I, as you said, there are so many diseases that are out there. Mm -hmm. But you know what I want to do? And I want, I don't want to do it now because I know you're not prepared for it. But the paper this morning talking about leprosy. Yes, and the armadillos. And the armadillos. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about that sometime. As an expert on the case, I want you to, to really <laughs> check it out because I will want to know who's playing with those am armadillas mm -hmm. that are out there. Or if it's something where an armadillo who's in your backyard and people who love to feed the, the wild animals, those armadillas will come into your backyard and then they're that it, illness is It can there. present a, a danger, there's no doubt. And Absolutely. you know, I think the, the bigger concern for us in the humane field is rabies. Um, Unfortunately, yeah. when there's food that's left out for cats, when people are trying to be good-hearted for the cats, um, that food attracts other animals, mm -hmm. including raccoons and, and other types of wildlife. So that can present a danger, not just to your pets or to animals in the, uh, the neighborhood, but also to people as well. So it is a, a really um, important issue, and that's why we always encourage people, please keep your pets inside. Absolutely. So that you don't have these kind of problems, and that um, uh, people really do need to be aware that there is a rabies issue, not just uh, uh, in well, Florida. Always, I was going to say, we've always had a rabies issue. But there's a rabies alert, actually, now in Indian River oh, County. So, it's um, the leprosy that it, <laughs> and, and the leprosy, me. too, right. Yeah. So um, we really do need to be cognizant of the importance of making sure that we keep our pets inside and we make sure that they're spayed and neutered. I, I don't mean to be rude, and la I'm not laughing at Janet. I am laughing at Tabitha, who is absolutely... Isn't she adorable? You, because she's chewing. She just, but she doesn't bite. She just plays around. Yeah. And then she flips over. She's, She's absolutely kitten. adorable. She is an adorable kitten. And again, as um, we were saying about the cats and kittens at the Humane Society, um, when they're adopted, they're spayed and neutered, mm -hmm. microchipped, vaccinated against diseases such as rabies. <laughs> So um, it's really important oh, that we yes. make sure to keep our, our animals safe and, and healthy, not just at the Humane Society, but out in the community. Absolutely, and I would think as well, it, it also is important to play with them, have fun with them, because it's just like a child. It keeps them really active and fun. This little one is so precious. She is a female. She is beautiful. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> and her name is Tabitha and her now. her name is Tabitha. But she, look, and what I love is she doesn't bite. She's just sort of plain. So she's already learning, and even when she's holding onto my hand, her nails are pulled back. So she's already trained. Call the Humane Society, get Tabitha. We're gonna come right back. You're watching Buzz TV. I'm Marsha Littlejohn. Stay with us. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Hi, I'm Penny Chandler. I'm, I'm Freddie Woolfolk. I am Barbara Hoffman. And I'm Gregory Simpson. I'm here with Police Chief David Curry. You're in good company on VeroBuzzTV.com. Vero Beach's local TV station on the internet. I just love it. Tell a friend. We love you all. Now that health reform is law, you cannot be denied health insurance coverage, but you can pay too much. As a single mom, I was convinced that we could not afford health insurance until I spoke to the people from ICANN, who told me that I qualified for a special enrollment and a subsidized rate. Now I get so much more for so much less. Call now and get the ICANN mobile app free. So don't wait another minute. Call ICANN, get covered, save money.
And we are indeed back, as I promised, after one minute. And no, we have not had Tabitha adopted yet, so she is still available. All you have to do is call. And when you adopt some a, a kitty cat or uh, maybe a puppy dog or a goat, I think you all had goats we have there two one goats, time. So yeah, we've had two goats. We have two horses uh -huh. we're looking for homes. Beautiful, beautiful yeah. horses. Mm -hmm. But you go through a little screening process, don't you? Yeah, it is. Um, we don't like to think of it as screening, but more of a uh, counseling process. Mm -hmm so that we can talk to people about what their expectations are for a pet, what their lifestyle is like, do they have the money um, that they, they think it would take to take care of an animal. So and cat food and dog food is not inexpensive. It's And training and mm -hmm. vaccinations and, and all that stuff. Yeah, so I mean even for a cat like Tabitha, you know it probably cost somebody, I would say when you think about the litter, the toys, the supplies, mm -hmm. and the food, and the veterinary um, bills, probably she would cost about five to eight hundred dollars a year in care. Oh, really? Yes. Hmm. So, um, I mean, that's that's not exorbitant, but it is something that people need to think about. That because it is a responsibility. Absolutely. Now, big question, though. Um, does Tabitha have brothers and sisters? She actually know does. <laughs> like 14, yes. right? <laughs> yeah, well, she has about, um, I think I saw three other kittens who uh -huh. were in her um, cat condo with her. So her cat they are condo. her I love cat that. condo, yes. And so, those were her relatives. Yes, so right. I believe they're big, her siblings. Big question. If one would like to have Tabitha, may mm -hmm. they adopt two? Absolutely. And wouldn't that be wonderful for yes, Tabitha? Yes, that would be fantastic for both of them because Absolutely. cats are really very social. So they would love to have other companions a lot of the time. Yeah. I've always said that also maybe takes the load off of you having to really be responsible for keeping that kitty cat happy all I the know. time it's when you It's so leave. hard being you know, needing a lap warmer and just petting them all the time time and all of that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I could do it. Oh, I Tabitha think you'd be great for the so job. so adorable. I have an Essie Mae who is at home and I adopted her. Gosh, how old? I mean, she's, I think she was about six or seven when we got her. Uh, but she is so wonderful and we've had her for almost 10 years now. And she is just That absolutely. is a great long life. Well, we love, I mean, Essie Mae replaced after we had uh, uh, Rastus. Mm -hmm. who was our first Siamese that we adopted on the air, mm -hmm. and we had Rastus for 17 years. Mm -hmm. And then never did I think I could ever replace Rastus. Essie Mae has done it. Mm -hmm. So you never know. I mean, they just get into your heart, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And you know, you bring up a great point that um, Essie Mae is about, what, 16 now? Mm -hmm. So oh, about, yeah, 11 or 12, I think. Oh, so 11 or 12. she must have been about six or... Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, all right. So um, actually, the um, average lifespan for a cat is now considered, thanks to good health, Health care and, and knowledge that we have about cats is anywhere from 15 to 20 years or oh, even I was more. Say, yes, he's going to live forever. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. So it's uh, kudos to you for taking such oh, good care of her. Love, just love them. And of course, that's the thing to do is you go out to the Humane Society. You don't go to a pet. Well, right. I don't want to say that because we might get a good pet store too. But but really, it's, there's so many out there. But the bottom line here is on this last minute, Tabitha is for sale. I mean, she's not for, for sale, adoption. she's for adoption. Right. I was going to say, no, she's for rent. No, she's <laughs> <laughs> because, she, oh, she is so adorable. But, and so much fun, but there are many kitties out there, and this is the time to do it, because you can get one or two kitty cats. Mm -hmm. The adoption fee has been waived. They're Fabulous microchip. They're spayed and neutered. Oh, they good. get the free They're ID all... tag. They get the vaccinations. Terrific. So donations. Donations. Quickly. Yes. Yes. For anyone who's interested in uh, donating to the Humane Society, uh, we do need blanket sheets and towels uh -huh. because we get in a lot of animals who who we bathe and take care of, and also um, the pet food bank. We um, help pet food. with. Right. We need pet food not for the animals at the shelter, but for animals who are out in our community, for families oh, who may be struggling financially. So there you go. And just call the Humane Society and get all of this information. Thanks so much for being with us. Oh, thank you for having me on. And thanks for bringing Tabitha. Oh, oh you're adorable. welcome. I hope you get Tabitha. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Advertise your business on Buzz TV. Email buzztvnetwork at gmail.com or call 772-777-1382.